Hello and welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. My name is Alfonso Peluso and I'm a studio associate professor in the College of Architecture at IIT, the home of the legendary Mies van der Rohe, and I'm adjunct faculty at Columbia College Chicago in the Interior Architecture program. Shout out to all of my students. I hope you're doing well. I'm recording this video on the Lunar New Year. So Happy New Year, everyone. It's the year of the tiger. All right. So today this video is going to look at Rhino 2D drawing basics. So we're going to go over transformations like move, copy, offset, array, scale, mirror, trim, fillet. We're going to look at line weights. We're going to draw some walls, doors, windows, look at hatching, and look at scale factors. We're going to end up with something like what you see on the left in the Rhino window here. All right, before we jump into the tutorial, let's tab over. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, what are you waiting for? Please subscribe. I just recently hit the milestone of 10,000 subscribers, so I'm pretty happy about that. Help me get to 20,000. So click on the little red subscribe button. Click on the bell to receive all the notifications. See what my students and I are up to. We've been up to a lot of stuff recently, so you can see that in these videos that I've uploaded. Also, follow me on Instagram. Again, see what my students are up to, see what kind of drawings they're making, what kind of reviews we've had. We recently made this Armadillo Pavilion at IIT using our new CNC router. It came out fantastic. All right, let's jump into the tutorial. All right, so we're going to start with a new file in Rhino. So I'm going to go to File, New. And we're going to use Large Objects Inches. So Large Objects Inches, anything bigger than a truck. And uh, we'll use Large versus Small Objects Inches. So we're making a little building bigger than a truck. So it's going to be Large Objects and our units are going to be inches. Okay, we're going to work in a top view today. And I'm going to type in DOC and I'm going to go up to my grid. And we're going to have a grid line count of 50 and we're going to have minor grid lines every 12 inches, which is every one foot. And we'll have major grid lines every six minor. So every six feet, we'll have a minor grid line. Let's make it five feet so it's even. Okay, 50, 12, five, and our snap spacing is gonna be 12. All right. All right, so the first thing we're looking at is move, copy, array, offset, scale, mirror. So let's go ahead and look at that. So I'm going to draw a circle. So I'm just typing in the command circle. So notice my, my grid snap is off at the moment. Uh, my object snap is on. Uh, we'll talk more about object snaps as we get a little more into the drawing. Okay, I'm going to draw a rectangle. Okay, so first transformation is move. So I'm going to move this object. I'm going to select the type in move, and I'm going to scoot that over a little bit so it's over the eye. Okay, so if I select these objects and I type in move once again, I can move these either um, off on an angle like so, or I can move them straight over holding my shift key down or turning on my ortho at the bottom of the screen so I can move those okay so that's pretty simple that's move how about copy I'll select both of them I'll type in copy and I'll copy those over so right now my ortho is on so at the bottom of my screen you'll see ortho is highlighted in bold so my ortho is on so I can copy 
uh, a number of these just by clicking. Hit enter when I'm done, hit escape. Okay, offset. So what's offsetting? So if I want to make multiple circles and I want these concentric circles to be offset from one another, I can type in the command offset and my distance, I'm going to choose a distance of one inch. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, so that's one inch. So then I move my cursor to what side that I want to offset. Okay, so it's offsetting the black line. The yellow line is the original line. So if I move my cursor out, it offsets outward. If I move my cursor in, it offsets inward. I can, I'm just selecting the object and then right clicking, which is restarting the command. Let's try it with the rectangle. Same thing. So again, I don't have to keep typing in offset. I'm using my right mouse button to restart the offset command. Okay, so that's offset. Let's look at array. Array is a little bit different. Um, it's a little bit different than offset, but it's like a, a multiple copy. Okay, so I could have used an array when I copied this one, two, three, four times. I could have, I could have used an array for that. So we'll try that in the vertical direction. So I'm going to select all of these. I'm going to type in array and number in the x direction. So x direction is from left to right. I don't want any more of these in the left or right direction. So I'm going to leave the number at 1. 1 means what I have right now. That counts as 1. And then in the y direction, I'm going to type in 5. In the z, I don't want any in the z, so I'm leaving exactly what I have as 1. Okay, so now I pick a point anywhere, and then I set up my spacing. So if I want my spacing, I'm going to have it just get near the top of the grid. So if I want that to be my spacing, I just click once. And I have to press enter to accept. I always forget that. I always hit escape and then it doesn't work and I have to redo it. So I'm going to press enter. Okay, so there is my array. All right, how about scale? Let's look at scale. So I'm going to take one of these circles. I'm going to type in scale. Base point. I'm going to use the center of the circle. So I'm going to turn my center snap on. There's my center. Now it wants a reference point. I'll just pick anywhere. And then I can scale it in. Let's try that again. I'm going to do it this time. Is there a copy? Let's see if there's a copy with a scale. Yes, there's a copy. I'm going to say copy equals yes. Base point is going to be my center. I'm picking a start point and an end point. And I can keep scaling it in. All right, so that's our scale. Now let's look at mirror. So if I want to mirror something, and it's going to be hard to see with this type of object, but let's try it anyway. So let's select all of this, type in mirror, start of mirror plane. It could be as simple as that. So it's, it's mirroring itself equal distance from the left of my line to the right of my line. I could mirror along an axis that's not straight. So I'm going to turn off my ortho. So I could do something like that mirror in that direction. All right, next. Let's look at trim and fillet. All right, so I'm going to draw some lines and turn my ortho on. Okay, so trim. I want to make a corner here. I want to make a corner. So I'm going to type in trim select cutting objects. So both of them are going to be cutting objects. I right click and I choose what I don't want, what I want to trim away. So that's what I want to trim away. So I can also make a trim with a fillet. 
I like doing that a lot. So I'm gonna type I'm, I'm gonna type in line and draw a couple lines. So I'll draw these lines and I will use fillet. So I'll type in fillet, F-I-L-L-E-T, and I'll set my radius to zero. And I'll fill it between these. So that does the same thing trim does. And I can also add a radius into that. So I'll try it again, fill it. And I'll set my radius equal to one foot. And I'll pick this line and that line. And that has a one foot radius on it. One foot fillet radius. All right, fantastic. Let's take this stuff and let's move it over. Okay, so we're going to talk about line weights. So I want to draw some line weights. Line weights are super important when we're talking about Rhino 2D drawing basics. It's all about the line weights. Line weights in architecture, they talk to the viewer, the person looking at the drawings, and they know that things that are really heavy are being cut through in section or are really important or are in the foreground. So we use line weights to communicate in architecture in our drawings. So line weights are very important. So I'm going to go ahead and look at setting up some line weights. So I will minimize this window for now. And I want to look at my layers. So my first layer, I'm going to make that, I'm going to go ahead and call that thick. Thick lines. Okay, and I'm going to make that current. So thick lines and I'm making that current. And I'm going to go ahead and draw, just draw a rectangle. Okay, so we don't see anything at the moment. It doesn't look like that line is thick and or thin. So what I'm going to change is I'm going to change something called the print width. So for the print width where it says default, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to change this to, I'm going to go ahead and just change it to 1. Okay, still, I don't see anything in the viewport. What I have to turn on is something really important. It's called print display. And I need to ch change that state to on. And then I can hit enter. Enter one more time. Okay, so let's take a look at this line. It still doesn't look like it worked for me. So let's try it again. Print display. State equals on. There it goes. That's simple. I think I just forgot to click on state equal on. Okay, so now we're seeing a thick line. So let's let's open this window up here and add a little scribble here. And so print display. Okay. So let's look at something uh, because print display has to be turned on every time you open the drawing. So if I minimize this and I save, I'm going to go ahead and save my drawing. Okay, so I'm saving my drawing. So you see that it has this thick line. I'm going to reopen this file. So you see that is turned off. Print display is not on automatically. So I have to turn it on every time I open the file. So print display state equals on. Click on on. Okay, so there's my print display. So this is what I call WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. So that you're always seeing the thickness of the lines that you draw. You're not waiting to print it out. Now after you print it, you will need to make some adjustments to these lines. Okay, so that's my thick line. All right, let's make a medium line. Okay, 
must be in the middle of a command if it's not letting me rename. So if you ever get into that situation where it doesn't let you double click into a layer, it's because you're in the middle of a command. Okay, medium lines. I will set the print width. I'm going to set that to point six and I'll draw a rectangle. So if I zoom in, I'm seeing the difference between my thick line and my medium line. And then I'm going to make a layer called thin lines. And I'm going to make that 0.13 millimeters. And each time I'm making these current so that when I draw my rectangle, Okay, so there's my three different line weights, the red being thick, the purple medium, and the blue is thin. All right, so those are set up. So I can move this off to the side. Okay, so we're going to start drawing some walls. So my walls are going to be on my thick. Those are going to be my thick layer. Walls are cut through and plan at about a four foot height from the, from the ground or from the floor, from zero, zero. So we're cutting through the wall. So we want the wall lines to be nice and thick. Okay, so I'm gonna make my thick lines current and I'm gonna go ahead and draw. I'm gonna draw from the origin. So I'm gonna turn on my grid snap. So the origin is where the X and the Y axis meet. I'm gonna draw using a polyline. So polyline is a great um, command in Rhino. Let's get that set up there, polyline. And it allows me to draw continuous lines at once. So I'm going to turn on my grid snap. It's already on. I'm going to snap. And I'm going to type in 20 feet. So if I take my ortho off, what Rhino does is it draws a line that's 20 feet. It draws it out 20 feet in length, and it wants you to click what the angle of that line should be. So I just want it to be straight. So I'm clicking, and now I'm going to draw my next line 20 feet. It wants me to pick my angle. I'll pick that as my angle. I'm going to draw my next line at 30 feet. It wants me to pick my angle. So I'm going to turn my ortho on for this. So that that it's nice and straight and then I'll draw over 20 more feet and I'm going to draw another one of these angles at 20 feet okay I'll turn my ortho off so this one needs to meet the green line so I need to zoom in and meet the green line so right there meets the green line and then I can type in C for close and that gives me a nice thick closed polyline. Thick closed polyline. Closed polylines are really important when you're drawing in CAD. So if I select this and I type in the command what, yes, the command what, and you'll see it's a valid curve. It's a closed polyline. All right, fantastic. So that helps me a lot when it's a closed polyline. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to offset this wall. So I'm going to use offset, which we looked at earlier. So offset. I'm going to offset a distance of 6 inches. So select curve to offset. I'm going to offset that to the inside. It automatically trims or fillets it with a radius of 0. So now I have my two offset lines. Now what I want to do next is I want to put in a set of doors. So I'm going to go to my medium lines. Okay, this could be medium or thin, but I'm going to go ahead and draw this with medium. See how that looks. All right, so I want this to be, I want these doors to be on this angled wall right from the middle of that wall. Now, if we look at my snaps, let's uh, bring this up and 
minimize this. If we look at my snaps, my O snap is on, it's highlighted, and it's I now have end, mid, center, and perpendicular. That's an important one that I want to make sure that I'm using. So I can go ahead and I can type in line. And in my starter line, I could say, I'm going to turn my grid snap off while I'm doing this. I can say, it's, there's my starter line. And then it's perpendicular to the wall. Now, that doesn't mean it's at the midpoint of the wall. In fact, it's definitely not at the midpoint of the wall, but it's perpendicular to this angled wall. So that's step one. Step two would be to move it from its, move it from its end point. So I'm selecting it, typing in move from its end point to the midpoint of that wall. Oh, let's try that again. So I'm going to move this from the end point. I'm going to turn off my center snap. That's getting in the way. Sometimes too many snaps can get in the way. So I'm going to turn off my center, and there we go. That makes it real easy to move to the mid. Okay, so this door opening, it's going to be 6 feet. So I'm going to go ahead and take this and copy it three feet this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the offset. Because it's an angled line, I'm going to use offset. So offset is one of the transformations we looked at just a little bit ago. So offset, my distance is going to be three feet. Okay, so I'll offset that three feet. And I'll also do it in the other direction so that it's total of six feet. Okay, so I'm going to draw this door. Uh, I want it to be three feet. So I need to draw the door symbol at three feet. So I'm going to, again, use offset. Distance of three feet, which is already set. I'm going to offset this line. Okay, it automatically puts it on the current layer, so it keeps it on this medium line layer. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and trim. I'll use that as my cutting object. Okay, and I'm going to offset this two inches inward. Okay, there's my two inch offset. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off the thick lines for now. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw an arc. And my center arc is going to be the right side of the door, the outside of the door. My start point is going to be there at that midpoint. And my end point, I'm going to go all the way up. I'm just going to go right, right here to that end point. Okay. So now if I, I'm going to delete a couple lines. I'm going to delete this line here. Okay. And I'm going to finish drawing this all right I remember the first time I drew a door in CAD I was just so excited about it okay so this brings me back way way back to some days some days at IIT I went to IIT so I was drawing these doors uh, a long time ago in AutoCAD all right, not that long all right, so I'll select all of those and I'll try, type in join. Okay, so now I can take these two and I can mirror. So mirror was one of our transformations. I'm hoping that all the transformations that I've shown will allow you to draw your floor plan. Okay, so I mirrored it. I picked the bottom point and the top point. Let's try it again. So I'll select these two, mirror, and I have to draw my mirror axes from this end to that end. And I can get rid of these two. All right, let's turn on our walls. I'm going to make my wall layer current because I want to trim this. So I'm going to draw a line from there perpendicular to there, and a line from there perpendicular to there. And I'm going to select that line and that line, and I'm going to type in trim. All right, so now we have a nice, a nice doorway. Look at that, it's fantastic. Okay, next I wanna make a window. 
So I'm going to make my medium lines current. And I'm going to go ahead and make a six foot window on this straight wall here. So I am going to draw a line. And then I'm going to copy that line six feet. I'll put my ortho on. So six feet and tell it where I want it. So I want it right there. Okay, now I'm going to trim away the red lines. So I'm going to go ahead and type in trim. And my cutting objects are the purple lines. And I'll get rid of these two. We'll come back eventually and draw the wall lines. All right, so what I'm going to do to show a window is I'm going to show what are called mullions, which is the frame of the window. So I'm going to show the frame of the window and the glass. That's all I'm going to show for the window. So I'm going to type in rectangle and I am going to actually I'm going to draw a polyline so I'm going to draw a polyline so from this point it's up two inches over the six inches down the two inches and then oh, let me click that mouse button and then see for close okay and I can take this and I can copy it, one of our transformations, from this endpoint to this endpoint. Okay, that's our window frame. So we're cutting through our window frame at, at four foot high. And I'm going to draw the glass line, which is going to be a line from the midpoint. My midpoint snap is on. And I'm going to offset this. I'm going to offset it one inch, but I'm going to off, offset it on both sides. So the total offsets one inch, but half of that is going to be 0.5 inch. Try that again and get rid of the middle line. So if I do a distance, this is going to be one inch. Okay, that's our one inch. Okay, I'll get rid of these two. And I'm going to draw with my thick lines. I'll make my thick line layer current. I'm going to draw a line across. Okay, that's our window. I also remember drawing my first windows <laughs> at IIT. All right, next. Next, we're going to look at, I think we're going to look at hatching next. Let's see. We looked at windows. Yes, we're going to look at hatching. All right, so let's go ahead and look at hatching. Let's make a layer. Make a layer called hatch. Making that layer current. I am going to make, eventually we're going to do some line work with this. So I'm going to make this lines as here line. Okay, we're going to do a solid hatch and a hatch with lines. So let's start with the solid hatch. That's going to be um, on our thick lines and our wall lines. So I'm just going to turn off the medium lines for a second and I'm going to join these lines together. When you're drawing 2D work you want to join as many lines together as possible. You don't want to leave a bunch of single lines just out there. You want to join them. So I can select these and I can type in join. And you see that says four curves join into one closed curve. So that's perfect. That's what I want. And then I'm going to do the same for these. So I'm going to make a big window. I can include that other one. It won't join it because it can't join it. Okay, so that's this is four, clo clo four curves joined into one closed curve. So that's perfect. So I have two of these closed curves. So that's what I want. So my hatch layer is current. I'm going to type in hatch. It says select curves. I'm going to select this curve and that curve. Enter. And I'm using, I can pick any of these hatches. I'm going to use a solid hatch. For this one, I'm going to use solid. And click OK. And that fills that in. And we'll talk about making that a color in a little bit, but that's going to be our hatch. 
Okay, now I want to make a hatch that is going to cover the, the, the whole inside. Okay, so I am gonna, what I'm going to do is on my hatch layer is I'm going to draw a polyline and my grid snap is off, but my O snap is on. I'm going to do this, uh, you know, once you get used to this, you can do this pretty good from a distance or if you need to zoom in, you can zoom in. But I can do this pretty good from a distance. And I'm going to type in C for close. <clears throat> Okay, there is my line that I'm going to use for another hatch boundary. So I'm going to type in hatch and I'm going to select that curve and I'm going to choose grid. Okay, and my pattern scale, right now it's a really tight grid. You can see that there, really tight. My pattern scale is going to be, is going to, I'm going to use my scale factor, which we're going to talk about at the end of this. Uh, tutorial. So my pattern scale, I'm going to make it 98. Okay. And I'm going to turn off my grid. Not my hatch grid, but my grid in Rhino. So that's my F7 key will turn off. If you're on your laptop, it might be function F7. Okay. So <clears throat> at IIT, we could never get away with a hatch grid like this. We would have to draw the grid. I'm not going to draw the grid today. Uh, I'm using a hatch pattern just to see that grid, but at IIT we would have to draw those grids with lines because we would want them, the, the grid line to be even. We wouldn't want this funny little spacing that's happening here, and that's the only place it's really happening is right there, so it's not too bad of a hatch. It's just right here. We have a little bit too little of space. So we need a little bit more of a hatch there. Anyway, so you could draw that hatch pattern on your own with lines, making it nice and even lines. Or it could be part of a structural grid. A lot of buildings have structural grids or they have a planning grid where the grid should be a certain distance apart. Okay, let's turn our medium lines back on. Okay, so I realized we didn't use our thin lines. We might, we might, like I might go in and make these two I might put those on the thin line, change object layer, because they're pretty close to one another so that they don't fill in. I'd like to leave spacing in between there. So that might be on my thin lines. Same thing with these door, door lines. I might put those on my thin line. Okay, getting, just getting my line weights set up really nice, paying attention to the line weights. Okay, next and lastly, we have scale factors. So this is really important. So I'm gonna use my scribble here. So scale factor. I've memorized these. Uh, it's amazing how long they've stayed in my brain because it's been a long time since the day that I learned them, but super important. So scale factors. So for one eighth, inch, one-eighth inch, my scale factor is equal to 96. For one-quarter inch, my scale factor is equal to 48. So I'm just dividing 96 in half. And for my half-inch drawings, my scale factor is 24. Okay, so that's something you want to put to memory. So let's look at that. How do I use the scale factors? Well, I use it because now I want to print this drawing to scale. So if I want to print this drawing to scale, I need to know my sheet size. So we're going to use 11 by 17, and we're going to put that layer 5 is going to be I'm going to call this my sheet. And I don't want to draw with the light, color white. I'm going to use black. Okay, so I'm going to draw a rectangle. I'm going to use a, a polyline command to draw it. So I'm going to draw that 17 inches by 11 inches. So whatever your sheet size 
may be. That's what you want to draw here. If it's 20 by 30, if it's 24 by 36, you just want to draw that at, at full scale. So this is 17 inches. And then C for close. So that's my sheet of paper. So how do I get this drawing to fit into my sheet of paper? Well, I'm not going to scale the drawing. I'm going to scale the sheet of paper with the scale factor. And I'm going to use 1 8 inch equals a foot. So 1 8 inch equals a foot is equal to 96. Okay. So I'm going to select that, type in scale, pick my base point, and I'm going to type in 96. Enter. Okay, I believe my copy is still on. Copy yes is still on. So let's get rid of that. That shouldn't, that could happen. Like it just happened for us. Copy yes. Okay, and I'm going to move this sheet. Turn my ortho off. So this is nice at 1 8 inch. I have room for a bunch of elevations that I could put here, or in a bunch, maybe a couple elevations that I can put here. Now if you're drawing your elevations, you wanna, I'm gonna go to my default line. I can see that's my construction lines. You wanna project lines from, let's put my ortho back on. If I'm drawing my elevation, I wanna project lines from, from my plan. Okay, I'm just projecting lines, so that's part of my elevation. That's a really quick way to, to draw some elevations by projecting lines from your plan. Okay. All right, let's look at how to print this now. Super important. That's the name of the game here is how do we print it and what does it look like? All right, so first of all, it's going to print with these colors because if I widen this out and make this wider, Here's print color. So we haven't set the print color. So that's really important, is that you need to set the print color to black. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and set these. You see that's updating on my screen. And lines will be black also. Okay, my hatch, I'm going to make the hatch a gray color. Now it's matching my background. So to change my background to white, which will look like the sheet of paper, it'll represent the sheet of paper. So what you see is what you get. I'm going to type in the command DOC, enter. And I'm going to go down to appearance, and I'm going to choose colors, and I'm going to make the background color white. Okay, now I can see if I zoom in, I have my gray, a very, really thin hatch pattern for the grid, and I have my gray solid fill. Okay, so that's looking really good. All right, so now I'm going to type in print. Okay, and we're printing to an Adobe PDF. Our paper size is going to be tabloid, is 11 by 17. Or I could choose 11 by 17 here. It's going to be landscape. It's going to be horizontal. Okay. My view and output scale. I'm going to pick my window. So some of this has been done already because I, I've done this in an earlier example. Um, but I'm going to pick my endpoint and my endpoint. Change scale to fit window area. I'll say yes. We're going to change this, though. Um, so I hit enter. Um, we're going to change that so that instead of scale to fit, this is going to be our eighth inch equals a foot. And when your rectangle fits that entire sheet, you know you've done the scale factor correctly. If it looks something like this, if I go to quarter inch, then it's not going to print correctly. That's at quarter inch. It doesn't quite fit on 11 by 17. So I need to change this to eighth inch equals a foot. Fits nice and perfectly, so I know I did my scale factor correctly. Okay. 
Uh, what else? I think that's pretty much it. I don't think we need to get down into these other details. Okay, so let's just print that. We'll give it a name. Okay, so that PDF was created. Wow, look at that. That looks really good. Let's zoom into that. All right, I don't love I don't love the grid lines on top of the <laughs> on top of the wall. That look, looks a little strange there. So I have to figure out how to arrange the grid so it sits back a little bit. I doubt that that. Well, yeah, that would print kind of funny. So the thick lines are a little bit too thick. Okay, so thick lines are a little bit too thick, and I kind of like them. But uh, let's go ahead and change those so they're not too thick. And where I'm seeing that they're too thick is like right here. I'm not getting my mullion to show up for my glass. This is really heavy right here. It's not It's not showing a lot of the wall. So you really won't know until you print it. Okay, so printing it to this Adobe PDF. So it's not just, you know, run and go. You want to print it. You want to take a look at it. And then you want to change your line weights. You want to really spend time on the line weight aspect of it. How are our medium lines? So yeah, the medium lines are a little bit too thick also. So I'm going to change my thick lines and my medium lines to make those a little bit thinner. Okay. Let's close that. All right, that's pretty simple to do. So thick lines instead of 1, I'm going to make that 0.7. And medium lines, instead of 0.6, I'm going to make that 0.3. Okay. And then I'm going to print. Rhino will remember the settings from last time, so that's fantastic. So now I'm just clicking on print. All right. So let's take a look at this. So it's a little bit better. It's not, it's not too bad. I'm getting a little bit of that frame to show up. Uh, that wall is still a little bit thick. It's blocking that. Let's see. Let's see what's going on over here. It's a little bit better. I'm getting that medium line and that thick line. So I think in reality what I would just do is I would make... I would make this mullion a little bit thicker instead of just instead of the two inches that I made it. I would make that a little bit thicker so that it sticks out. I like that my my glass frame is, or my glass is showing up. All right, so that looks pretty good, and I think that's all I wanted to cover. So that is Rhino CAD Basics, Rhino 2D Drawing Basics. Remember the scale factors. Memorize the scale factors. All right. Thanks for watching. And you're going to see my head pop up in the upper left. Go ahead and click on that if you haven't subscribed. And in the upper right, I'll put a link to a video. And on the lower right, I'll put another link to a video. So I will see you on the next one.